We just got a bit of a uh, well, brief introduction to Arena of Faith, a new game that's coming out of Crytek, uh, obviously a MOBA. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what it is and sort of give us a brief introduction of the game? Absolutely. Uh, we don't actually refer to it as a MOBA, even though it does take inspiration from MOBAs. And the reason we, we're doing that is this is a five versus five arena battle game mm. with the focus on collaboration between the team. So there's no, uh, the, none of the elements that put you in competition within the team. We've removed those and you can focus on having the fun and the coordination within the team against the other team. It's also a 20 minute battle. It's timed and therefore the scoring system is a little bit different from other traditional games. Yeah, yeah. I, I noticed that. It's a very interesting scoring system because there are several ways to win and, and sort of caters to different play styles. Uh, it, it does. So yeah, you can score a point by simply knocking down an enemy tower. Um, we say simply, but the tower is actually pretty mean in this game. Uh, we can also kill titans, which spawn later in the game, which is a, a way to try to come back if you're a little bit behind, um, or to finish the game off if you're, you happen to be in the lead. And um, the third way is to score uh, seven kills against the, uh, the enemy team. Any, any of the players on your team who, who get a kill, if that accumulates to seven, you get a point on your team. Uh, the first team to ten wins the battle, and if you can do that in less than 20 minutes, that's the quickest way to, to do it. Uh, you could also win if you knock down the enemy's towers, all of the towers to the end. Yeah. Um, or if you um, don't have a victory condition before then, 20 minutes will, will end and you'll say, okay, the team with five points and the team with four points, the team with five wins. So. All right. So obviously it's got the, the tropes of leveling up and sort of unlocking uh, skills as yep. well. Can, can you give us a little bit of an uh, insight on, into how that works and, and what players can expect? Absolutely. Well, one of, the, one of the things that we were trying to do was remove the overwhelming amount of information that most people have to uh, sort of process to play one of these games. In our game, we've simplified things where as you level, and when you get to level two, you'll make one decision. And that decision is, I want to add a new ability. I've got four abilities, I want my fifth ability. And we give you a short list that varies depending upon which hero it is. Here's my short list, which one do I want? This game, I want that one, okay? When you get to level three, we have a trait panel. And when you, when you get to level three, you get to pick one of those traits. And you might say, oh, I want to be uh, faster, or I want to be stronger, or I want to be healthier. Very simple decision to make, uh, depending on where you are in the battle and what time you've, you're making that decision. So it lets you customize or adapt to the situation of the battle without giving you this overwhelming, oh my god, I've, I've got to study uh, on the internet before I can go and play the game. And, uh, but, but there's still a lot of depth there. Right? You, know, you make it sound like it's a, a s simple game. Uh, I noticed that was a lot of, of tactical depth as well with the characters and, and the character is something I would like to talk to you about because you're, you're pulling them from a little bit of an unusual source. Well, right, we, we were actually, the, the way this actually evolved was we said um, what would be a, what, what kind of hero would people be able to relate to? Mm. And we said, well, somebody that they already know and well, what would be interesting? Well, what if we took characters from myth, legend, or actually real people. That would be very interesting. And we started exploring the idea and we came up with a list of them and then we evaluated them for appropriateness. And so Little Red Riding Hood might be fighting with or against Robin Hood um, alongside Fenrir or maybe uh, Tesla. And uh, we, we found that to be, this is a whimsical game, so we thought that would be really interesting. And we also, uh, the, the idea of bringing Tesla as a hero to a game is extremely exciting to me because he's actually a personal hero of mine. I think it's interesting because also, I mean, you, you sort of have to put these characters down into, you know, your traditional roles, if you will, sure. and sort of see what fits. With, well, I played as Wallace, for instance. There's Sherlock Holmes. I mean, obviously, there are different roles there that sort of fit naturally. Yeah, they do. So if you play Robin Hood, as an example, everybody sort of have an, an image of Robin Hood. I have a bow. I'm going to shoot that bow. So that immediately means you're a ranged character. So you start with that, and then the designer has the challenge. Well, how does that fit in with the other 29 heroes that we're releasing for the closed beta? Um, all right, let's see. We came up with answers, and those answers are entertaining. And if we've done our job well, which we believe we have, you'll, you'll find that that is a Robin Hood that you believe, yeah, that feels like Robin Hood, that plays like Robin Hood. 
Uh, and that was the challenge we had for each of those heroes, sort of meeting the expectations we think the audiences will have about them while boiling it down to not a, a hardcore role, like, oh, you are going to, if you choose this hero, you have to play this way. Robin Hood that I play and the Robin Hood you play, they're both archers, they're both ranged, but the choices you make during that battle, I might decide to make him a tougher, stronger Robin Hood. You might choose to be faster, and um, you might choose an ability that allows him to freeze enemies in you know, a little crowd control going on. Now we're playing very differently. The roles that we actually choose are different, even though we've chosen the same hero. Very interesting. And y you mentioned the 30, 30 characters for the open beta. What, what, what's the rollout plan here? And, and is, it, can we expect the same sort of uh, business model as, as with other uh, games, similar games? Or? So let's we'll start with the rollout plan. Uh, 30 at closed beta. And we think that'll take a while for people to actually you know, process what does that feel like, who do I want to play. We don't have a rotation model where we say you cannot play heroes. Like if you like Robin Hood, you'll be able to play Robin Hood as long as you've unlocked Robin Hood. We do have an unlocking plan, though. We weren't going to give you all 30, here's your, here's your 30 heroes. We're going to give you some of them, and then you'll unlock them. Um, that, the monetization model is it's free to play. It's a game as a service, uh, but it's not pay to win. We really, we call it play to win rather than pay to win because we want people to play the game and that's be, it's a sport it's a it's an activity that feels very sport like so we want that to be pure we want that to be i feel i won because i have skill and knowledge uh, we will monetize because we want to pay for the service and we want to grow it and the way we're going to monetize is through unlocks um, also we're going to be offering skins and modifications of appearance etc and there might be some boosts in the meta game side of it as well all right interesting and and you mentioned there the close beta uh, this is still early days, you just announced it, but, but what's the reaction has been like here at E3? Extremely positive. We're really, really happy. People come in, uh, some of them have actually heard of the game before through the press releases or through some of the video we released, um, and they have certain expectations based upon other games they've played. And they come in, and they start playing, and when they come out, they're like, number one, oh, that was a lot of fun. Number two, that was different. That was not exactly what I expected it to be, but I'm really happy with what I saw. So that's been the, the, the pulse we're getting out of the, this group, which is perfect for us because that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for people to, to find something new here because we think the genre is really exciting and it's the fastest growing genre. But we think there's an unserved audience out there, people who want friendlier play, people who want, who want to feel like that they uh, can collaborate with their friends rather than have a competition within themselves against their friends. Uh, easy to learn, interesting heroes that they can relate with, not really competing for that final hit and all, all that sort of stuff. Well, I understand why that exists as a yeah. mechanic. I mean, in a, in a game uh, that has sort of, all these games evolve over time. And, 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 and that evolution led to, oh, we want to differentiate on skill within the team. Mm. Uh, we want to differentiate the skill of the entire team versus other teams. Um, we actually had a game that was just, just played recently where we saw a team that is, was incredibly core. They've been playing this type of game for a long time. They came in, it was an amazing, beautiful thing to watch. The coordination, the teamwork, and this is the very first time they've ever played this game. And they were, it was beautiful to watch. It was, as a developer, like you're like excited. I'm happy I wasn't on the other side. Oh, it was horrible to be, I was on the other side. It was horrible, but it was wonderful at the same time. And with a 20 minute match, you don't feel like, oh, I have to suffer through for the next half hour or undefined period of time. You know, so you know, we've already got a solution for, for the fact that if you're down in the game, there's always a chance to come back unless you're just totally skill over match like we were in that particular example. So you feel like you can come back. But the 20 minute time limit means there's not a long period of time where you're suffering, right? And if you're really getting beaten down, 10, 10 points comes a little bit quicker 10 than that. points comes very quickly. Yeah, I mean, that, that actual battle took about uh, 12 minutes, I think. Mm. All right. So uh, thank you so much for your time, getting a little bit of a, a look at, at Arena of Fate here at E3, and uh, I'm looking forward to playing it when it's in beta. You're welcome. <laughs>